Well, better late than never, Anna. We're joined by consultant endocrinologist and professor of medical devices, Derek O'Keefe. Derek, what is type 1 diabetes? Uh, type 1 diabetes is a blood sugar disease whereby the patient uh, gets a chronic autoimmune condition triggered by a virus, we think, that causes them not to be able to produce insulin anymore, which they need to control their blood sugar. Not lifestyle related at all? Not lifestyle related, and it means that they have to give themselves insulin exogenously. Yeah. Now, we filmed yesterday in the largest diabetes clinic in the country, patients of all ages coming in. We even saw little Isabel, who, who's nearly four. The way you treat diabetes has changed a lot in the last few years. It has, yeah, there's been a transformative change in diabetes technology, especially giving our patients blood sugar sensors and also insulin pumps to allow them to get blood, better blood sugar control. And the latest innovation is this artificial pancreas. Explain that to me. Yeah, so the artificial pancreas is a blood glucose sensor and an insulin pump that can talk to each other. So when the blood sugar goes high, it gives insulin and when the blood sugar goes low, it reduces the insulin. The patient doesn't have to worry about it at all? Just at mealtimes and exercise, but it's been a phenomenal change in the management of diabetes. That's great. Thanks, Derek. And we have somebody who's experienced that phenomenal change. Leah Hellebert, you, Leah, you were 13, you were only 11 when you were diagnosed with diabetes. What were your symptoms? I was drinking a lot more water and going to the bathroom more and I was losing weight very fast. So when you first had to start managing your diabetes, there was a lot of needles involved. <laughs> Yeah, I had to take five injections of insulin a day and do finger pricks to monitor my blood glucose and to scan my like sensor. Sounds difficult, was it? <laughs> yeah. So in April, you started with this new device Derek was telling us about. What difference has that made to you? It's made a huge difference. It's regulated my sugars for me to keep them in target. And if I'm going high, it will give me more insulin. And if I'm going low, it'll suspend it. So. And you've even started a camogie career since, <laughs> I believe. Yeah. That's I, great. Yeah, started to regulate my sugars and loved it since. So. Something good came out yeah. of it then. Thanks, Leah. We're also joined by consultant cardiologist Darren Milet. Darren, we filmed with you this morning when you were performing heart surgery. Uh, a type of heart surgery, yeah. So we had a patient this morning who um, presented to us with shortness of breath. He was subsequently diagnosed with a condition known as severe aortic stenosis, which is whereby one of the valves in the heart becomes blocked and he needed to have a heart valve replacement. So normally you would crack open the patient's chest, big open heart surgery, not this morning? No, um, so there are patients like Sean. Sean is 73, uh, um, but he's quite frail, um, who has an, and, and those who have other medical conditions who, who can't have open heart surgery because they're, they're not good candidates for it. We can see it, you fed it up through his groin, so this patient was wide awake. In the past you'd have to crack his chest open, open heart surgery. Yeah. This looks like a much simpler procedure? Um, it's certainly uh, less invasive for the patient. Um, uh, what you can see is that we passed the, the, a crimped valve up through his leg. Um, we we re-expanded that valve at the level of his heart and, and yeah, he's sitting there uh, talking to us during the procedure. And you've got a copy of the valve. This is not the exact valve that went into Sean, but this is the kind of valve that you, you insert while he's wide awake. Yeah, so this is a, a, the, the core valve from Medtronic. What we can do with this valve is we can actually crimp it down into a much smaller size. Uh, we can then place it into a delivery catheter and when we pass this up Sean's leg to the level of his heart, we can then reopen that valve, re-expands, and he gets a new valve without needing to have his chest open. And he's sitting up having a cup of tea afterwards, looking to go home, I'd imagine. Well, he's keen to go home, but we might hang on to him till tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, Darren. Well, that's it. We'll have more stories tomorrow on great advances in science, the difference it's making to patients. We're coming from the Matter Hospital tomorrow night. Back to you in studio.